Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shh. We invite everyone to take a seat. All the children who, there's a lot of bustle in the room. The sanctuary isn't a subway, thankfully. We get to kind of chill out a little bit, take a deep breath. I don't know who got caught in the rain on the way over, some of us. Um, but nothing can put a damper on Shabbat. So we're all here to welcome in Shabbat. And whether you're joining us via the live stream or in the sanctuary, we invite you to take a deep breath and turn to page 10 in Lev Shalem or 252 in Sim Shalom. Just a reminder that all those who identify as men should wear a kippah here in our sanctuary. And boys too. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
page 11 or 254. Night. 
page 15. <laughs> The fourth line on page 16. Page 20, the fourth line. <laughs> Please rise, Ms. Marla David, page 21 or page 
may be seated. We now have gone through the six Psalms of Kabbalah Shabbat and all the six days of the week that they re represent. So we hope you've walked through your week and said, okay, that week is now over. It's time to welcome in Shabbat with the Chadodi, page 23 or page 262.
תתגלמי מרגיש תוכפי ומתהמי ברא יצאו עמי הימים ולבנתם Turn now to Mizmor Shirley on Shabbat, page 27, or page 266, and we'll join together from Ma Gadlu, which is eight lines from the bottom. Mizmor Shirley on Shabbat, Me'od am <laughs> 
Shalom. Before we bring the children up for uh, the blessing, we um, first want to acknowledge that this is the first year that we've had such an influx of families here on the first and second Shabbat of the month, which has been extraordinary. And, um, and the team that made that possible, really, this is called the Shabbat model. And uh, a lot of our transition, there are a lot of transitions in the family life and learning department this coming year. And so we want to express our gratitude to those who have worked so hard um, to make this possible. And uh, so I want to acknowledge Rachel Barnahama. She may be in the back. Is she there? Where is she? Um, she probably setting things up, but Rachel Barnahama, who's our Associate Director of Family Life and Learning, who is really the engine behind the Shabbat model. She's the one who set it up. She's the one who shepherded it through with the team of educators, Kelly and um, Claire, who are in the back amongst others. And we want to thank them for all their incredible work. And Rachel also was joined us basically right before the pandemic started and led Kadima online during two and a half years, basically, which was a huge, not easy effort. Um, and so we want to thank her for her incredible service. Uh, Laura Schultz is in the back with 40 teenagers are here for Hitor Ari, uh, davening on their own. Um, and she also is making her way back to California uh, to be closer to home. And we want to thank her for her, all her incredible gifts of giving our kids, um, our teenagers in particular, so much safety and love, particularly in these years of COVID. Um, and now I want to spend uh, just a moment saying that about seven and a half years ago when our previous director of family life and learning, Ivy Schreiber, told us she was leaving, um, she gave us a decent amount of time and so we had plenty of time to receive a lot of resumes, none of, look, none of whom looked particularly attractive. I was the one who was the first pass at those resumes. And then uh, one popped up and uh, actually two, we said we were going to interview two of the people and I had an initial interview with Mike Whitman and it was very clear to me within five minutes of the interview that he was the one. Um, and he has been the one for these seven years when he joined us seven years ago. Um, and when I called his references, one of the directors of the camp that he's been so passionate about, Mike and I grew up at the same camp, and then he made his way to the sister camp, Crane Lake, and the director of Crane Lake at the time when I called her for a reference, she said Mike was the Pied Piper. And I didn't really know what that meant at the time, but seven years later, it's very clear 
why Mike was, why she called Mike the Pied Piper. And uh, part of that was because he was magnetic for children. Um, that, and I think as we enter this, this parasha, these early weeks of the portion of the, of the book of Bamidbar, which counts each and every person, Mike has been the person who, no matter where a family was coming from, no matter what challenges a child had, where they were playing soccer or baseball or instruments, Mike's commitment was to making sure everyone could count and everyone could participate, and everyone had a gateway in. And he did that not only in making all these options possible, but then with the love that he conveyed to each and every child and each and every family. And when you have seven years of that, you get this, which is a, a room, a sanctuary filled with families and children, a back room on Shabbat morning filled with early childhood families, a teen room filled with teens, the chapel is filled with teens, trips and retreats, and uh, a sleepless director of family life and learning. So I think um, I, I know on behalf of Becca and Roly, Aaron, who worked particularly when Rebecca Becca was on leave, and the entire senior staff in particular who's worked so closely with Mike. Um, but I know on behalf of the families, um, there's just an incredible amount of gratitude for the ways that you've, um, through the ups and downs in these years, have not been easy, as I said, through COVID, um, shepherded um, through your love and dedication and commitment to make sure everyone counts. And we want you to know that your counting has had an indelible impact on this place. And we know, and I've said this when I said that Mike was leaving in a letter, that we are all the stronger for your leadership. We are all the more loving. We're all the more meaningful community um, because of the way you have led over these past years. And uh, Mike is only going back across the park, um, which is actually where he lives too. Um, so where he's not gonna be far and we anticipate uh, seeing him in the sanctuary with his family. Um, but we um, want to just express our enormous gratitude. And uh, when we say for the next generation, um, Mike has made that possible. He's created that stepping stone here and we wanna thank him. So I would like to invite Mike up and all the other educators also and invite our children up for the priestly blessing which comes from this week's parasha. Um, Mike has shined his light, he's granted peace. He's been here with so much grace and uh, we uh, want, he's offered so many blessings and we want to also let him have a blessing. made the craziest impact on our children because he bought a blow-up Gaga pit. And I mean, if anyone knows how impactful that has been, come guys, no under legacy. the tummy. That's your lasting legacy is the blow-up Gaga pit. Yisimcha 
Yasem Lechad Shalom. Amen. Amen. All the children and families can make their way to the back for Shabbat dinner. That I don't know if you, uh, anyone grew up in a sanctuary that was high, uh, that had a high bima. I assume this actually sanctuary had a high bima before the ceiling collapsed. And I grew up with a rabbi that had a robe and uh, would put his hands out like this from the high bima. And as a kid, it was like, wow. <laughs> and that was how he offered the blessing Birkat Kohanim, which uh, appears in this week's parasha and which never seems particularly accessible when I would think of a blessing or what it means to say a blessing. That wasn't a position that I would have ever considered myself in or an image of what it means uh, to bless that felt close or intimate. And then I moved to New York City, obviously a number of years passed by, and it's incredible when you walk in the city and on the streets and we have unfortunately many people who are on our streets living unhoused on our streets. And in, it's pretty amazing, I don't know if this is your experience, but that often, whether you give tzedakah or not, people will say, God bless you. As if it rolls off the tongue without effort. And for me, it, that would have never rolled off the tongue because this was my image, right? That, it wasn't like a, a close notion of blessing. And it always kind of struck me how natural it felt, how organic it felt for also some of the most vulnerable people to feel the power of what it meant to say, God bless you. This week, as I said, Parashat Naso contains Birkat Kohanim, that beautiful blessing that we just shared and said to our children that we say every Friday night on Shabbat. And it says, Daber el laharon vel banav lemor, kod tevarchu et b'nei Yisrael amor lahem. Speak to Aaron and his sons. Thus shall you bless the people of Israel. Say to them, Yivarecha Adonai v'yishmarecha. May God bless and protect you. And so there are many commentaries. There are obviously two other additional lines to what make this blessing. But there's a lot of commentaries about what it means to bless. And so I'd like to just share three uh, to try to bridge the gap between this and uh, those that are walking on the street that offer their blessing to us, and hopefully we can say it in return. The Mojasur Rebbe says, thus how you bless, uh, meaning the priests should bless, bless the people as you find them. Do not look for the best or the most important, nor for the greatest scholars or righteous people for everyone deserves to be blessed. Which is a beautiful notion. It doesn't say, thus shall you bless this kind of people, or thus shall you bless that kind of people. But the power of blessing is accessible. It, there's no hierarchy to being offered a blessing. And everyone, according to this teaching, is deserving of blessing. All the people of Israel here are blessed. No one is singled out as better or more worthy or not. And the teaching of the Jose of Lublin says, thus shall you bless the children of Israel. It teaches that it was Aharon's character. Aharon is the high priest who would offer the blessing. It was Aharon's character to love and love peace and pursue it. That's the mojo of Aharon in the Torah. Um, thus shall you bless. The blessing of the priest shall be that Israel will be blessed with traits of Aharon. They should be blessed with traits of that on our own, too, that they, too, should love peace and pursue it. So the nature of trying to figure out, according to the rabbis here, the rabbi here, the Jose of Lublin, is that the essence of blessing is actually that people should uh, love peace and pursue it, that that is at the essence of what it means to receive a blessing. And finally, there is another teaching um, about the fact that it says, thus shall you bless, and then the opening of the Birkat Kohanim says, 
may God bless you and keep you. And so the question is, why does it repeat bless you? It already says, thus shall you bless. Why does it say, may God bless you and double it? And the, there's a beautiful teaching by the Kitab Sofer who says, um, God bless you, that God blessing you is a part of the blessing because a human being does, um, does not know what to bless another. For what they think may be good for another person may be bad for them and vice versa. Rather, may God bless you, may God who knows what is good for you bless you. Which is a very interesting teaching to say that we who offer blessings, parents, rabbis, whoever, the person on the street, is channeling a blessing, but in all humility, we actually don't know what's best for another. We don't have the whole answer. And it is God who is the best channeler of the blessing since it's a mystery of ultimately what each of us need individually, which is, I think, very powerful um, and humbling. Um, and we live in a world with so many curses, you know, and I feel like week after week we're saying this bad thing happened and this bad thing happened and this bad thing happened. And a lot of the curses in the world are the opposite of what these teachings do. In this world there is discrimination, that people who are, don't, aren't considered um, worthy of blessing because of what their skin is or how, whom they love or where they live or the history of their family, or because they live on the streets and are considered to be in the same dignified way as others. And so it's a challenge to say, actually, if we could think of everyone in those ways, maybe we wouldn't have so many curses. Maybe the blessing is the antidote to that curse. And it's Pride Month also. We just entered Pride Month, and the fact that blessing is supposed to channel and pursue love and peace is a recognition that um, it's our obligation to learn how to love one another and to honor each person for who they are and to not pursue war with someone or another country, but to find the love and peace in another story. And finally, there's so much in our world and particularly in our country and legislation even happening in our country that so many people think they know what's best for the other. People know what's best for women and their bodies. People know what's best for transgender youth. People know what's best for the Palestinians, or they've decided what's best for the Palestinians. Um, people know what's best for lots of different people. And so a world has been created to decide, um, to determine what's good for you. But according to this teaching, it's, there should be humility about understanding that actually we don't ultimately know what's best for everyone. And we should create a world that allows for the thriving and for God's blessing to reign on everyone. And so as we live in this parashat naso, this, with this incredibly powerful blessing that for thousands of years has been uttered on the high bimas and low bimas, on the street and the country, um, I hope we'll carry forth that notion of what it means to recognize that we can give blessing and then everyone should receive a blessing and sometimes we don't feel worthy of a blessing, but everyone is worthy of a blessing. That the ultimate blessing is to love and pursue peace. And that's the grandest story that we can pursue in the world. And finally, that when we channel blessing or when we think we know what's best for another, perhaps we might want to step back and ask for God to offer the full blessing and not assume it's ours. And perhaps if we're able to do that and make blessings truly live in our world, there will be less curses. Continue with uh, Rvit, we rise for Barhu on page 39A or 279. Barhu et Adonai Amevorach. Barhu et Adonai Amevorach. I'm 
אמר אביב יום, הוא מביא לילה ומבדיל בין יום ובין לילה. אדוני צבאות שמו, אל חי וקיים תמיד ימלוך עלינו, לעולם בהם. ברוך אתה אדוני המעריב הערבי. פייג' פורי. כי הם חיינו ועובד ימינו ומהם נגד יומם בלילה ואהבתך אל תסיר ממנו לעולם יהיים ברוך אתה אדוני אוהב עמו ישראל וכל לבביך ובכל נפשך ובכל מאודיך והיו הדברים האלה אשר אנוכי מצוויך היום על לבביך ושיננתם לבניך ודיברת בם בשבתך בביתך ובלכתך בדרך ובשוכבך ובקומך ושרתם לאות על ידיך והיו לתותפות בין עיניך וכתבתם על מזוזות ביתך ובשעריך והיום שמוע תשמעו צוטי. אדוני את יעקב, וגאלו מיד חזק ממנו, ברוך אתה אדוני גד ישראל. 
to you on page 55 with Kiddush. I believe we have some cups of juice going around. Page 318 in Sim Shalom. those who are in mourning or marking a yurt site. Kaddish, Mornos Kaddish is on page 58, 324 in Sim Shalom. Those who are joining us on Zoom and are saying Kaddish are now invited to unmute. Yitkadal v'yitkadash shemer haba. Amen. Be'alma, divra, kirute, v'yamlich malchute, v'chayechon u'v'yomechon u'chaye d'chol bet Yisrael, בעגלה ובזמן קריב אמרו אמן. יהי שמי רבה מברך לעלם ולעלמי עלמיה. יתברך וישתבח ויתפאר ויתרומם ויתנשא ויתהדר ויתעלה ויתעלל שמי דקודשה בריך. לעילה מן כל ברכתה שירתה תושפחתה ונחמתה דמירן בעלמה ואמרו אמן. יהי שלמה רבה מן שמיה וחיים עלינו ועל כל ישראל ואמרו אמן. עושה שלום במרומיו. הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל, על כל יושבי תבל, ואמרו אמן. אמן. You may be seated. We offer condolences on this Shabbat to David Coleman and Galit Shuler, their children, Evan and Maya, and their entire family in the death of David's father, Harold Coleman. We say mazal tov to Aaron, Rabbi Aaron Levin. This is his last Shabbat here. And uh, we will hear uh, his words of Torah tomorrow morning. And we will call up uh, 
a number of members of our community who have been recently ordained. Rabbi Stephanie Gedan, Rabbi Adam Gilman, Rabbi Alex Hamilton, Rabbi Aaron Levin, and Rabbi Andrew Mandel. Tomorrow morning, we will have a special aliyah and bless them uh, on their ordination. Uh, we have uh, tomorrow morning services begin at 9.30, but before, if you'd like to come earlier, we have 8.45, Achanel Atfila, with the singing of some beautiful Pew team and with some reflections and meditations. We meet in the chapel at 8.45. Shacharit begins tomorrow at uh, 9.30. We have... Um, what do we have? We have Arvit and Avdala tomorrow at the end of Shabbat at 9.15. On Sunday, uh, some are marching in the Salute to Israel Parade and those who want to join the Upper West Side community along with UJA Federation, will, the lineup will be on 52nd Street between 5th Avenue and Madison. You have to enter through Madison Avenue and look for section 9E, 52nd between Madison and 5th uh, Avenue and the group will gather at 12.30 under the banner of the Upper East Side Jewish community. On Monday morning at 8.30, there will be a gathering to protest a number of Israeli government officials who are here, who uh, have shown an inclination for far-right policies, for homophobia, for hatred, for liberal Jews, for anti-democratic tendencies, and other wonderful things that uh, they represent our beloved State of Israel. And so there will be a gathering outside of Gotham Hall. It's Broadway between 30, 36th Street and 37th Street from 8.30 to 9.30 in the morning, Monday morning, to greet uh, these ministers who will be entering the Jerusalem, Jerusalem Post's uh, annual conference, Monday morning, 8.30. Uh, on Monday evening, and this, we have entered Pride Month, and we have quite a number of uh, opportunities to celebrate and to reflect and to see the work that uh, remains to be done. A lot has been done, but a lot remains to be done in order to uphold the dignity and the rights of LGBTQ plus Jews. And so on Monday evening, Jews in film and television, LGBTQ plus Jews in film and television online, a class with uh, Staff Meishar. And uh, it will be, uh, if you go to the BJ website, you will see how you can sign up and watch excerpts of this film, analyze biblical, contemporary, and academic texts as they deconstruct and reconstruct these characters' journeys and see what it means to be Jewish and queer. At 7.15 p.m., there's a Flal uh, town hall, and it will be to hear more about the upcoming transitions in our family life and learning department. There are many changes. Felicia announced a number of our staff members are moving on, and so there are questions about what's coming next in terms of leadership and in terms of the program, and so there will be a town hall 7.15 Monday evening. You can register on the BJ website after Shabbat. On Tuesday evening, 7.15, we have their annual meeting of BJ, where uh, it's for BJ members only in person and online. We will hear reports from Felicia and myself, from Colin, our executive, the executive director, from Suzanne, our president, and from our treasurer, uh, Alan Mandel and uh, Alan Mantel, and we will hear about uh, what uh, some of the achievements of this present year and some of our plans for the next year, particularly as we inf and begin to unfold our recently completed strategic refresh. We will also be uh, expressing our gratitude to members of the board who have completed their service and welcoming uh, new board members who will, be, who will be nominated and will be hopefully elected this Tuesday, 7.15, Tuesday evening. Finally, Thursday, June 8th, we gather together 
with Dan and the wonderful group of musicians as uh, we celebrate the music of Paul Simon. It's called Bridge Over Troubled Water, Paul Simon's Musical Mysticism. It's part of the Mickey Levin concert series. It will be on Thursday at 7.30 p.m. in person as well as online. We hope many people come here and experience this wonderful concert uh, with an all-star ensemble together in person at 7.30 on Thursday evening. And finally, I want to say uh, a w one month more thing. Uh, I just saw that there is a Pride Shabbat dinner on June 23rd in two weeks or three weeks, and uh, as well as a community Shabbat dinner on June 16th, and we welcome people to sign for either of these uh, dinners on the BJ website after Shabbat. And I want to say a warm welcome to Hagai Bilitsky, who is joining us from Israel. He's one of uh, uh, Israel's more celeb most celebrated bass players, and we are really honored to have Hagai here with us. He's on his way to a conference where there will be a thousand bass players from around the world. <laughs> and he's going to be one of them. And uh, we want you to come back, either on your way back from the conference or next time. And when you are in Israel and look at what's being offered in terms of concerts and so on, look for Hagai Bilitsky. You won't regret it ever. He's great. And we conclude now with Shalom Alechem on page 73 or 722 in Sim Shalom. Shalom. Amen. Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Eloise, come.
Thank you.